All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for coming to our Oozle webinar today. My name is Stephanie and I'm the COO at Oozle Media. We really wanted to share um, insights and trends that we saw happening from mid-March to April. When things in March started hitting the fan, so to say, um, and we found out that basically states were gonna be shutting down, which meant schools needed to close down. As an agency, we knew this was gonna be a pretty pivotal moment in terms of what was going to happen to the industry, what was going to happen to schools. And because we work with so many schools around the nation, we were in a unique position to get a certain vantage point of how the virus was going to impact schools and was going to impact the industry. And so, I mean, even from, you know, mid-March, we knew that we were going to do this presentation and we've been tracking the data, reflecting back, um, you know, this, this past week, we were actually, I think everyone in the world was excited for April to end, but we wanted April to end because we really wanted context on what happened um, again from mid-March to April. We knew how it felt. I mean, it felt pretty dark. It felt pretty heavy. It felt very uncertain. There was a lot of conversations we were having with many clients, not just our school clients, but any client that we worked with at Oozle about how this virus was, the pandemic was impacting their business and what that meant for their marketing dollars. Um, and so today we're going to share with you those data, uh, that data, the insights that we took away from, and also kind of what we're starting to see happen now that we're a week into May. So the first place that we wanted to start was with search terms. We took a look at um, the most common search terms that generate leads. Uh, both organically and on PPC ads for our beauty school clients. And we wanted to compare um, the search volume, the interest in those terms year over year. So we looked at uh, January through April 2019 versus January through April 2020. And the reason why we looked at months, not just April, or not just March and April is because we know that January is usually a big seasonal peak for the industry. And we wanted to get some context of, okay, we do typically see things start to trend down um, after you know early February. And there is usually a bit of a seasonal valley, um, but what did that look like when you add a worldwide pandemic um, on top of what usually is a seasonal dip anyway. So this is uh, the term cosmetology school. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but on this top line right here, you might see very faintly, there's a line that says 100. And when the, when the chart touches, when the line touches that, that 100 line, what it means is that that search term is at its peak interest. That's, that's uh, the highest volume of interest in this search term. And as it falls down to like the 50 line, what that means is there's 50% less interest in that search term. So when we looked at the term cosmetology school, um, you know, last year in January, we, we were actually kind of surprised. Uh, there wasn't as much interest until closer to early February that we normally see. We usually feel like we see um, peak interest in cosmetology school earlier in the year. Um, things, different things can affect this. Sometimes schools have later start dates, like rather than starting around like January 9th, January 8th, um, sometimes the first start date of the year comes closer to the end of January. Um, some of them even start in February as the first start date of the year. So we know things like that can have an impact, but in 2019, you know, we definitely see 
the peak at the early part of the year and then another valley and dip. And this again goes through the end of April of 2019. Um, when you look at 2020, it's, it's not surprising again to see what happens. I think the thing that was kind of disheartening is if you look at early March in 2020, we had a nice little peak of uh, interest in cosmetology school and then you hit mid-March and things just fall off a cliff. I mean, you can really see where the news came that things were gonna have to change, everything was gonna be shut down. And I mean, it, it's not even a 50% fall. This is like, it tanks to below 25% interest of what this search term normally sees. So this is the term beauty school. Um, again, you know, you look at 2019 and you think, oh, it's kind of interesting. You know, we saw a little bit more of a peak in the March, February timeframe, um, not as high in January again as maybe we normally would have expected. When you look at 2020, uh, beauty school was going pretty strong through January, through February, through March even. We were hitting this peak search interest multiple times. And then again, the news comes, things just kind of fall off a cliff. I mean, it, it was really shocking. You just don't see this kind of drop in a search term uh, normally. So here's barber school. Uh, again, not as drastic as a, of a drop. I mean, it was already on a decline for the year, but you know, when you take it in the context of, okay, the year before, yeah, there are some seasonal dips and peaks, but overall there's interest in the term, there's interest in the topic and it kind of stays floating, um, you know, right at that, at least at the, the 50% line. Uh, again, we hit mid-March and, and things just kind of tank. But if you look over here towards the end of April, this is um, April 18th is this last date that's right here, but this is pulled through April 30th. You start to see a little upward tick that might be a hint of um, better days ahead. And then this is esthetician school. So we kind of saw an inverse of what happened in 2019, where uh, there was a little bit more of a seasonal dip in the winter and more interest starting to happen in the spring last year related to esthetician school. Um, this year, again, we, we were actually seeing still kind of low interest, which I know might be surprising to people because a lot of our schools are saying they're um, they're filling their aesthetics programs without any problems. I definitely think that aesthetics has been the hot program for the last little bit. Uh, this is just, again, typically when we see someone search the term esthetician school, um, they are in the research phase and they've educated themselves a bit because when folks are just starting to think about going into aesthetics, they're using more search terms like skin, skin care, um, facials. They just don't know the vocabulary quite yet. Um, and that's why I chose this search term is because if somebody is searching esthetician school, it's an indication that they are in the mindset and have done at least some pre-research into what that entails and they're more likely to be like in the buying phase of or the decision making phase so to say so again um you know things were already kind of looking a bit low uh and then we just see them tank you know in mid-march and i don't think anything of this was or i don't think any of these charts were surprising to us it's just interesting to actually look you know at this at, at, at the drop, just how steep it is for beauty school and then cosmetology school. It's just like off a cliff in the middle of March. And so 
um, again, the reason why we wanted to share this is sometimes it's just nice to have context and to look back and see, you know, those things that we were feeling were valid. I mean, they were happening. People were really busy thinking about um, their families, their, their immediate um, circle and how this was going to impact them, their jobs. You know, we were trying to stock up on supplies and groceries. There was just a, a, a bigger checklist that was taking our attention and the news and the, and the counts every day of, of new cases and deaths. Um, that was really preoccupying people, you know, mid-March to early April, especially. And I included two other keywords that I think are important that I'm going to show you the trends for. Um, you know, I think I read today that unemployment is at like 14% now. And, you know, we really start to, we really started to see some staggering numbers around unemployment. And we knew that with people being home, it was going to be a time of self-reflection. How, how would life look and feel when this was over? And what did people want it to be? You know, there was kind of this time of like, there's been a hard reset. I'm forced to pump the brakes on everything. And I kind of get to evaluate, you know, even if there are definitely people who, you know, even if they had a job in, in retail and food services that was no longer available, there's this question of, well, even when things open back up again, like they're starting to now, do I want to go back? And so we saw, again, around terms like online courses, you know, right here is that mid-March time, and it just shoots up through April. I mean, people are at home. Again, once they've kind of got their families settled, um, they've got, you know, some supplies or relatively seem to be in a spot where they can kind of look to the future and think, well, gosh, what is going to happen next? What do I need to have happen next? We see that attention turn to what we know is an indication of people thinking about, I want to change my life. When people want to change their lives, their careers, that starts with skills and learning new skills. And that really starts with education. Um, distance education. Again, this is another search term that I heard used heavily in the school industry. I think online courses is definitely the most common and immediately recognizable term. Um, you know, people really connect that with, okay, I can learn independently at home online. But distance education, again, this is that mid-March time and it just shoots up, you know, um, a huge increase in interest in this. And I wanted to give that context as well, because I know that there were a lot of schools who worked very, very hard to pivot to online learning. And I know that that was not an easy task. I know that that wasn't something for a lot of people that was just flipping a switch. I mean, it really was something that was just a huge challenge for schools. We had to quickly pivot from classroom learning into getting people settled at home, getting educators comfortable teaching online, find, finding all the tools, all the resources, um, great content to share. Uh, and so I do think that the schools that hustled, the ones that really made that a priority, I do think they saw some benefit from the interest in distance education and, and online learning. So the real question becomes, you know, did April cliffs bring May lifts? And, you know, that's what we're trying to understand. And we're going to look at a handful of schools from across the nation to see, well, what kind of cliffs did we go off in April and, you know, what actually happened? Um, so what we did is we took a random sampling of schools from across the nation that we work with. Uh, I am going to show you examples from different regions in the nation. And we compared website traffic from current, there's a thing called the current period versus the previous period. So again, we took January through April because we wanted to give 
a wider time frame. We know that you know this first part of the year involves a peak and it involves a valley. Um, and we wanted to compare that to September through December of 2019. And then we also compared that to April 2019, or I'm sorry, January through April of 2019. So it was like a year over year comparison and then a previous period comparison. And we wanted to understand what happened to website traffic for schools. Website traffic is usually a, a fairly good indicator of what's happening with the school in general, obviously, you know, the more people are coming to your website, the more people um, are learning about you, the more that they're probably going to fill out a form or, you know, call you and start a conversation with admissions. Um, and analytics was also a tool that we have to look at all the schools that we work with. So let's get started looking at some of the schools. Um, this is a school that we work with in the Northeast. Uh, this was a comparison of, again, traffic January through April versus um, September through December of last year. And the biggest drop for them and for a lot of schools that I saw did come from organic search. And then the biggest gain in traffic came from display. And this is really important because um, for those of you who attended our PPC webinar, Back very early when this all started happening, we as Oozle Media got together, we consulted uh, with all the smart people who work at Oozle and all of their marketing expertise. We're a Google premier partner, so we had access to folks at Google to help us strategize and think through things. And we actually did a partner webinar with Google to talk about what we thought would be the best PPC strategy, the best way to spend your ad money, um, you know, looking at how things were looking the end of March and trying to figure out how we were going to navigate April. And very early on, we switched our schools over to a heavy emphasis on what we call display ads. Think of display ads as billboards around the internet. So a display ad has a visual, um, people click on it and they can go to your website, to your landing page. It's not a hard sell. It's more of a, hey, just popping up to let you know I exist kind of ad. And normally at Oozle, we do not put a heavy emphasis on display because our clients want more leads, because we are trying to generate as many leads as possible, we put most of our budget into what's called search network. And search network is an indication that people are ready to buy. It's a way to find the hotter leads because if somebody is actively going to Google on their own and searching something like barbering school or cosmetology school, they're already in the mindset of I'm considering going to school. Display ads are actually more for planting the idea of going to school. Hey, I just saw this ad for a cosmetology school. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I do watch a ton of beauty tutorials. Maybe I'll think about checking out what a career in beauty might look like. And most, and, and that's going to have to start with school for me. So again, most of the time, we do do a sprinkling of display ads with our clients' budgets, but we really focus on the conversions and getting more leads. Well, early on, again, we did this webinar with people, this webinar with Google, and we said, hey, one thing we're going to do for our clients is we are going to switch everyone to a heavy display ad um, campaign and strategy with their PPC budget. We just know that right now, other things feel more important. They feel more pressing. And we just want to remind people that our clients are here. A lot of them are doing um, distance education and enrolling into online courses. We just kind of want to plant the seed and, you know, do a gentle pop-up of letting people know that we're here. So um, this, this school that we're looking at right now is in an area that was very, very hard hit by the virus. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, and again, I love the relationship we have with Oozle clients. It really is the most important thing to us. And I love 
how comfortable our clients were telling us the truth about what was happening in their area and in their school. And we totally empathize with the idea that, you know, people, students, staff, there was a whole checklist of things that needed to come first before marketing dollars came up. And sometimes those, I mean, 90% of the time, those marketing dollars were needed for something that was most important. So actually, the story that I thought this school did a good job of representing was um, they actually reduced their budget by 90% at the start of April. Things were just looking very, very precarious, and it was hard to justify letting that cash flow go out the door. And, you know, again, time and energy needed to be spent on pivoting and getting things online and distance education happening. And so we did that. We said, you know what, that's totally fine. We understand we are still going to give you this display strategy. We still think that would be the best thing for you. Well, what we saw happen, as you can see here, is um, a very noticeable dip in traffic. This is the end of March. This is the beginning of April. It just tanks. But what, again, I'm really proud of this school for is they really hustled. They brought back some admissions um, folks to support. They got their online learning coming. And then they came back to us and they said, um, you know what? We are seeing success with the ads that you are running. We are seeing people um, come for the virtual and the online tours. So you know, let's, let's kick up our budget again. And, and they actually, by the end of the month, ended up getting closer to 50% of the budget that they normally spent. And you can really see where that happened right here. This is literally the, the week, the day that they told us that we could spend more ad money because our team was trying to make the ad money last, the reduced, very reduced budget last as long as it could throughout the month to try and give as steady a flow of leads as possible. But once our team knew that we were going to have enough ad budget to make it to the end of the month, they really hit the gas and you see the traffic shoot up there. Um, so overall, this school saw a 13.5% um, increase in traffic to their site compared to the traffic that they had September through December of 2019. And the story with this school for me is this is the argument for investing marketing dollars consistently and early. Um, the big takeaway for me is, you know, I think in marketing, the thing that always sticks in my head when I'm talking to, to schools and small businesses about why marketing is important is that you don't plant a tree the day that you need shade, you know, you plant the tree and you've got to nurture it and it grows and then it provides shade. And I do think that this school's um, investment, you know, throughout the years that they've been with Oozle and, you know, the objective of always seeing year over year growth really helped them pad, you know, this dip that happened and then bringing back their budget allowed them to still see growth period over period. So this is a school in the Southeast. Um, again, I tried to pick examples of schools that reflect a lot of what we saw happen with Oozle clients across the board. Again, display traffic. It just, it, it, it really drove so much traffic to our clients' websites and moving to that display strategy really just did the heavy lifting for people. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting is if you look, you know, this is January right here up front. Yeah, there's there's a nice little pop there, but really it, things were kind of flat um, year over year. And, or I'm sorry, period over period. Uh, you know, we, we saw like, uh, you know, we're traffic popped up a little bit in January, but we were kind of trending to see the same traffic period over period. Um, what we saw with these guys was incredible. We flipped to the display campaign and traffic just shot up. I mean, you can see this nice little rise. And I really think at the end of March, if you had asked me and our schools, do you think you will see growth 
in April, it was like, no, we're, we're going to fight to just keep things flat. Like we just want to maintain something or mit or uh, mitigate the dip that we might see as much as possible. And it was just awesome to see how much traffic shot up. Um, and another cool thing about this school is using their, this ad strategy, like over 80% of the people who visited their website in April had never visited their website before. And that was an awesome thing for me to see because it was an indication that we were taking market share um, with the ad dollars that they did invest. So initially at the beginning of April, this school did ask to cut their PPC budget by 50%. But when they started seeing this sort of traffic and this sort of activity and they felt it on their end, they contacted us and said, you know, bring us back up. We, we want the leads, we want the traffic. And what I thought was so awesome is again, those leads and those traffic were people who had never visited their website before, which is a really good indication that we were taking market share. Um, these are probably people that would have normally run into one of their competitors or had one of their competitors on their radar, but we were actively driving lots of new traffic. You know, people who had never been introduced to this brand, to this school before, were now meeting them. And again, to be able to say that, in a time where we just thought, holy crap, our biggest goal is to mitigate the dip as much as possible. Um, it was just really awesome to see that data come out. And again, um, sort of period over period, we saw a, almost a 70% increase in traffic to their website. The other thing that I thought was cool was this school did add social ads in February of 2020. And I do think that that was another thing that was kind of fortuitous for them because it gave us some time to build up an audience on social and to have that as another place. Um, social ads are kind of another form of display. Uh, they're there to make people aware of who you are. You kind of pop up, you, you interrupt their social um, you know, entertainment time when they're getting on to see what their family and friends are doing or to be entertained because they're bored. Um, when you're running social ads, that is, again, an equivalent of knocking on someone's door and just saying, hey, you know, I'm this person, I do this thing. And if you're interested, you might want to check me out. And I'm just really glad that this school did have a couple months of well really like a month and a half of running some good social ads we we were able to build up some good data and some audiences there that i think helped out as well okay so this is um a school in the midwest uh they did see a decline of less than one percent period over period um when i looked at their analytics the biggest driver of traffic was referral and when i looked into referral it did turn out to be uh basically their analytics were categorizing their display ads as referral so um year over year they beat numbers but period over period it was again less than one percent and i'm just still living in the place of at the end of march if you had told me that um some of the most drastic drops we were going to see in traffic would be closer to like less than 1%. I, I just would have been very, very surprised to hear that. Um, okay, this is in the Mountain West. So this school did not cut their marketing budget at all. They kept things the exact same. And this is a year over year comparison of their website traffic. Um, so again, we were seeing you know, in January, there was a definitely some nice growth year over year. We saw some good gaps in February of year over year growth, but I mean, things really pick up for them actually in mid-March, which is again, just really surprising. And look at this other peak that happens towards the end of April. And we did see, um, you know, getting towards like mid-April when we were starting to say, hey, I think a lot of schools are actually going to see an uptick in traffic. We were trying to figure out why we thought that was. And again, what we came back to was people were at home. Um, a lot of people were 
knew that they had lost their jobs or again, were thinking about, hey, I don't know if I wanna go back to the job that I did have, even if it was available to me. And um, there was that time in the, the period of, I, I wanna look for another game plan. I, I wanna feel like I have something going for me and that I have the power to still change my life for the better during this time. And so um, we definitely saw more and more schools get that uptick in traffic towards the end of April. Uh, so for them year over year, this resulted in almost 80% growth for this period of time with the biggest periods of growth happening, um, you know, this like end of March and through April, more than what they had in January, which for the context and for what we were going through was really shocking to see, but also like an awesome surprise for us when we went through and looked at stuff. Okay, so this is a West Coast school, um, again, in a very hard hit state. No budget change for these guys. And the dip really follows like the news arc in that state of when things were getting really, really bad. And again, we kind of saw that pop back up once everyone was home, once it was kind of like, okay, this is how life is going to be for the next little bit. Um, just another lift and spike in traffic. And year over year, this resulted in 51% um, growth in traffic to their website. So I wanted to look at, as well at schools who had no marketing budget cuts um, year over year, how they fared, and then schools that did like a 50% or about that marketing budget cut. And then um, we had a, a handful, very few, very, very few schools that turned off marketing budget pretty much completely. So um, for schools that had no marketing budget cuts, year over year, we still saw, again, pretty good growth for website traffic. Um, and you start to see, yes, there are definitely dips and decline in traffic uh, when things got bad, when, when news got really bad, or particularly in the state, something happened where it was like the reality of the virus really hit. Uh, but for other schools, you know, I saw their biggest periods of growth happen in April, especially knowing that typically we see that valley and that dip in March and April seasonally. Like that's what we plan for as a marketing company. We kind of hit January and February really hard. We know things are going to slow down a little bit in March and April. And that's usually when we're getting ready to ramp up um, for summer and even planning like back to school and looking forward to the future. Uh, but I do think people being at home and having time on their hands helped, again, mitigate the, the drops that we thought we were gonna see. I mean, we really thought April was gonna be very bad. Um, so these are schools that had, oh wait, I think that the screenshots got mixed up here because these are the same schools. Um, so I apologize for that. These aren't the right screenshots in here. Uh, but for schools that saw a 50% uh, cut in marketing, we still saw, you know, 13% gains in year over year traffic. Um, for one school, organic dropped 56% in April year over year. So again, your organic channel is super important. It's the place where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. You're not paying for those keywords, you're not paying for people to click on your website. They're finding you organically through Google and converting on your website. And there were some schools who I saw a 70, as much as a 70% drop in their organic traffic year over year. So again, having that ads budget really and, and driving traffic through another channel really mitigated that loss for a lot of schools. Okay, so for the schools that completely turned off ads budget, like basically went dark, um, you know, this is an example that I saw. I would say that it was 
almost identical to anyone I saw who did this. There was a 30% drop in leads from February to March. And again, this isn't surprising. This is kind of what we saw across the board. The first half of March was actually looking pretty good. Like if you think back to the trends charts that I showed you, there was a, a spike in interest in cosmetology school at the beginning of March. Um, but the second half of March dropped off a cliff. Like everything just fell off. And it was shocking and very startling to see how quickly things dropped. So for a lot of folks, that first, those first two weeks in March were kind of the saving grace, again, for March not looking as terrible as the second half of March felt. So a lot of schools saw like the, or, uh, the schools that completely turned off budget, they had already seen like a 30% drop in leads from February to March. And then there was an additional drop of 55% from March to April. So when I compared like the lead count they were getting in February versus the lead count they were getting to April, there was usually about a 70% a 70 drop in leads, which is shocking. You know, if you're used to getting 100 leads a month and you're only getting 30, um, yeah, that's really scary and that's not going to feel great. So overall, um, what we took away from this is, you know, we've seen traffic this low in the past for schools. It happens when we see seasonal dips. Like when we looked at September through December, which is typically a slow traffic time for schools, especially once um, the holidays come around. The, the comparison of what happened February through the end of April, it was like, yeah, we've seen traffic be this low before. Again, it's going to feel different because you're adding a pandemic and the virus on top of that. But there was this, this wasn't a dip that we hadn't dealt with or that we hadn't help schools navigate through. Um, you know, we were really afraid it would be like the lowest numbers that we had ever seen in website traffic for schools. And again, what I came back to as I looked at everyone's analytics was ads, the display ads did the heavy lifting. Just being present, having that billboard of the internet follow people around and keep, keep, keep our schools in front of people, I mean, that made up for the fact that organic traffic dropped as much as 70% in some markets. And so if schools, for me, it was just a testament to the powerful investment of Google ads and social media ads. If those ads had not been working to mitigate the drop from organic, we probably would have seen numbers that were lower than we had ever seen before. And, you know, I am hopeful for May. I pulled this screenshot right before the webinar started. Now that we're, you know, where are we? Eight days into May. Okay. So again, this is the search term cosmetology school. We hit a peak in March, February. You know, we hit some lows and some dips, but it, overall it wasn't bad. You know, then we tank and things look very dire. I mean, anytime something falls below that 50% mark, I'm kind of like, oh, that's a big change in search interest. And we can definitely see that that's going to impact volume. Um, but look at this. I mean, this is the end of April and now this is the start of May. And that's a pretty strong upward trend. And, you know, I also know that at the end of the day, you know, website traffic has to turn into leads and it, and those leads have to turn into enrollments for it to um, matter to schools. And I've been speaking with all the account managers at Oozle. Um, I've been speaking with clients myself and I am extremely heartened by basically every conversation we've had has been, holy cow, we thought April was going to be a lot a lot worse. Like we were really, really scared um, at the end of March. We were really afraid that if this continued, you know, that last two weeks of March, if that's what all of April was going to be, if there was no way 
to get something going or working, we were going to be in a lot of trouble. And it's been really fun for me to get on the phone with clients and hear how many people they actually enrolled in April. And I want to give a huge shout out to the admissions teams who took the leads that Oozle drove in for schools and, you know, who quickly adjusted and were positive and just made the best they could out of having to do um, virtual tours, online tours, only be able to speak with people via Zoom or the phone. And, you know, I'm hearing things, guys, I mean, this, these are some of the highlights for me from conversations we've had. Um, schools adding additional start dates in May because they can fill them. Um, eight class start dates uh, at the early part of May and basically filling those classes. Uh, you know, I am hearing, again, really interesting numbers of like, no, my admissions people are enrolling, you know, 22 enrollments, 60 enrollments, 40 enrollments. Um, and it's been nice to connect with Oozle clients and kind of be able to sit together and say, wow, we, we were really scared. Uh, we were really worried at the end of March and April. If you had told us that this is where we were going to end up in April, just wouldn't have believed you. Um, it certainly didn't feel like we were going to come out this well. Uh, again, I don't think it's any, we all know that it's not anything that we would have seen if this virus hadn't happened, if this pandemic hadn't happened. But um, I think we're all just thankful and grateful knowing that it could have been a lot worse. And uh, again, I just want to commend uh, our clients. I know that it felt like a gamble to spend marketing dollars in April. Um, I do think it was a brave choice. I do think that, you know, again, we, we knew what it meant to look at your people, your students, all the other things that had to be taken care of and, and to still make the investment in fighting for your school was a big choice. And I'm just really happy that it does look like our strategy of moving to display and being able to drive additional traffic through ads really did mitigate what could have felt like worse drops in leads and traffic in April. So let's jump over to the reopening um, checklist. This is going to be similar to what we told you guys when schools were closing. Um, there are definitely places that you need to update and you need to make sure get updated. We can help you with these. We will be doing this for Oozle clients. So if you need help, please fill out the form on our website. Let us help you. Um, let us make sure that you're getting the information out because that's the name of the game right now. Um, through this whole time, what we have found is the schools that move the fastest to get information out and to make that information obvious to people are reaping the most benefits from the activity that is happening um, online. So off of your website, these are places that aren't tied to your website that you're going to want to make sure you update information on. Google My Business. Um, a lot of schools were marked as like temporarily closed. Uh, I would suggest doing a Google post, making sure there's some visual on there that catches someone's eye that they can click on. Um, kind of think of it as like another social media post, but make sure your Google My Business information is correct and reflects anything that you're doing with reopening. Um, and then, like I said, make sure you have a post on there. It's like, uh, think of it as like a social media post. Of course, social media. We know social media becomes a huge source of quick information. You know, people don't even have to go to your website. They can go to your Instagram account and they can find the information they need and they can call you or contact you from that account. So make sure that that's updated. Um, ad copy for PPC and your social ads. Again, I have a lot of schools that are saying, hey, I have a deadline for when I have to stop saying that I'm doing online course classes or distance education. So just make sure you sweep all of those places and get that cleaned up. 
Um, we have some schools opening next week and that's all we've been focused on this week is did we make sure that they're being compliant? Did we make sure that, that their ad copy has changed in a way that's contextual to what's actually happening on their school and that we've erased you know, mentions of distance learning or online learning? Um, and then, you know, signage becomes really important. If you have a marquee, if you have big windows, um, if you have a lawn outside of your school where you can stake a banner, you just want to be shouting from the rooftops what is going on. When will you be reopening? When, um, and then, you know, making sure that you're also explaining what you're doing to keep people safe. So this is your off website checklist, go make sure these areas have that information. Your on website checklist is to sweep your landing pages. Um, blogs are a great place to give more robust information. So for example, when our schools flipped over to distance learning, almost all of our schools got a blog that said, here's what that means for our school. And we saw those blogs pop up in the top 10 or top you know, 15 most visited pages on a school's website in April. And also anyone who visited that page, that was a really good sign that that was somebody who was still interested in getting their education started. They really wanted to understand what does your education look like right now. So do another blog that's similar to that. What is education gonna look like at your school in May and June? you know, share timelines. I saw a really awesome graphic from a, a local aesthetic school that we work with that I absolutely loved where it broke down week by week what was going to happen at the school, you know, when staff was going to come in and then when students were going to start and then how they were staggering classes and then, you know, tentatively saying like, hey, we might open up our clinic in early June. That's what we're planning for right now, but stay tuned. You know, all of that is so helpful and that's just what people want to know. So a blog is a great place to give details on how you're keeping people safe, um, what things are going to change as far as how education looks, you know, banners on your website to drive people to get to that blog quickly, you know, something that just says quick and easy, like, hey, click here to read our blog about reopening and how this will look for students, um, pop-ups. On your website again we saw those be very helpful the calls to action on your website if you change things to be focused on distance learning or on um, online admissions if those things are going to change if you're going to st slowly start doing um, in-person tours again you know sweep your forms sweep your website copy and then a big one for me is that information that you're putting in the blog of what you're going to do to reopen and how that looks, um, emails. Send those emails out to your lead lists. Let them know what's going on at your school and then make sure you have another email that's similar to that for your salon area and that you also send that out. I know a lot of schools have been telling me, holy cow, we've been getting so many calls with people asking when is the salon area open again? Can I pre-book my appointment? You know, people want to know. So get that information out to them. The, the best thing to do to be kind to your future self is if you know you're going to open your clinic area later this month or at the end of the month, give people expectations and a process to follow. Hey, here's how you're going to book an appointment. Here's what you will be expected to do when you come to that appointment. You know, wear a mask. I saw um, a salon here in Utah was saying, hey, the only thing we want you to bring in are your keys and your wallet and your phone. Like everything else, just leave in your car. And also only you, you know, don't bring anyone else. And just give them some really clear guidelines. Um, I felt this even when I, when I went to do a pickup from a restaurant that I hadn't uh, visited since before the pandemic, their curbside pickup was actually just really confusing um, because they were kind of open, but they weren't open. And it just made for a really weird experience and I didn't love it. So don't make things hard for people. They want to stay safe. They want to be respectful. They want to keep other people safe. Tell them what you're expecting of them and send it out in an email. Um, put it up in a blog. 
where all the places that you can share this information to make it quick and easy uh, for people to access. So we will be sending out uh, these slides and this recording. Um, I want to make sure that you guys know, you know, you can contact Oozle. We're happy to answer questions that are specific to your school. We're here to help. And yeah, as we look to reopening, we just want to make sure that people um, have a checklist of places that they know to go check and, you know, put that information up. And we hope that you guys all have a successful and smooth reopening and stay safe. Um, thank you so much for being with us today. And again, if you have questions, um, if you need help with anything, please go to the Oozel website and contact us there. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the presentation. So again, thanks for being with us and we'll speak with you soon.